I kind of thought you guys would love this one the best. <laughs> you kind of know my taste by now. <laughs> I do. This one I said, could I ask Meg for an option with our our actual B motif now? <laughs> no. <laughs> Denied. <laughs> Denied. The bees are evolving. We are not killing the bees. <laughs> you designed it. I know. You're. I'm more married to it than you are. But I think that's how it goes <laughs> as a designer. Montana is six years old, turning seven in January, and it's time for our brand to have a little refresh. Uh, we're looking for a cleaner design, cleaning up my beloved bee motif on all of our items and just making it a more cleaner aesthetic and hopefully telling our story a little bit better. I can see where we could elevate this, I think, leaned a little bit more playful I would agree mm -hmm. with that. than yeah. where we would want to be. Sure. Meg's been our I original know. designer Isn't that crazy? for like it's six really years. Crazy. I don't think that most of the competition is offering this much information on their labels. Mm -hmm. So I, I feel good about that. And if the candles are full color, I do think it's going to distinguish it mm -hmm. on a shelf. I feel like I'll have a go with that okay. and see if we're keeping the wax melts, mm -hmm. the candles, Lip balm verdict. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eric Roaring. And I'm Katie Roaring. And we're the founders of Fontana Candle Company. We took our candle business to a multi-million dollar business in five years, and we're here to help you do the same. Today, we're gonna to be talking about rebranding. This has been a huge project that we've been working on since January. It is now July, so it's been a good seven months of working on this rebrand. And we've always really talked about the importance of having professional guidance uh, with graphic design and with building a brand. It's something we've invested in from the very beginning. From the beginning. And it's something that although we have invested in so heavily, we invested in it six years ago, and now it's time to do a little updating. Yeah, one of the things we've worked with with our designer is that as, as we've grown and as the climate has changed, the typefaces, for example, on our old branding were something that she wanted to revamp. So as... as and feedback from the customers yeah. as well. We, we definitely get feedback on things like our B motif, which is prominent on a lot of our current packaging, and it's current on all of our candles and our melts. A lot of customers have felt like maybe the bee motif was a little bit too busy for their decor and they preferred a cleaner look, which is what we're moving towards because candles really are a decor piece. And that's what she said, as, as styles and seasons change, we've been stuck in our six-year-old footprint and it's time to do some updating. And so that's what we've been really working on the last seven months. I find it so interesting, even the smallest little change in like the logo and the typeface. I mean, she made the call out on our current logo. The F can be sort of hard to understand or people might not know that's an F. So she wanted to just clean it up and turn it around so there is no mistaking that that is an F in Fontana. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's something I never would have thought of. And one of the other big aspects of this rebrand is now we're able to um, add a box. So we're not only changing our label, but we're also designing a custom box for every scent and size. So as we've grown and trying to get into retail, we've gotten feedback that we don't have the biggest shelf presence. And so we're really working on this rebrand to add a box and really make the product stand out amongst all of the other products you might find on a shelf in, in a retail setting. So this has been our packaging for all of our Lunk scents and we just use a little sticker with barcode on the bottom to denote each of the scent. Yeah, this works for us because we can control the SKU and it doesn't have to sell itself on a shelf where having someone come in and picking it up to look at it every scent isn't very conducive to retail shopping. So by having every candle, scent, size, whatever, having its own box describing what it is, right from the front is gonna be very different for us and a big game changer. It's a little scary though. I mean, it's a it's lot very scary. of- It adds a lot of complexity to the business. Yes, additional inventory that we yep. have not had before. Yep, and it's, We've always managed inventory as we've gotten into SKU specific labels that were pre-printed and the amount of forecasting and making sure that those specific SKUs don't run out is a very big burden 
and this just adds another one of those burdens. So forecasting, proper procurement is going to be a very big thing we have to watch with this new rebrand and um, just added complexity to do it. I do love that the box gives us more real estate to tell our story. Mm -hmm. So it allows us to tell more of the story on the box itself, allowing the candle design to be clean and a little bit more of that decor piece. Mm -hmm. so we were trying to put so much information on our label that it did look a little cluttered. Mm -hmm. So it is a nice real estate piece if you do have a brand story that you want to convey on your packaging. Yep. I also think it's interesting, Meg, our designer, she, as she put our old and our new design together. The old, the B motif sort of cuts it off and it makes it look smaller. It's really neat because our secret sauce is we tell every ingredient that's in our candle so we uh, used RX Bar as our inspiration and their packaging, the ingredients are really simple, but they really pop. So that's, that's what we've done with this design. We have all of our ingredients right on the side, just like RX Bar. So the customer can see that we really are the healthy candle. So when we first started looking and realizing that we needed a professional to, to design our label. And not your graphic design yeah, skills. I did it in about three minutes off of, I think, Canva or something and paid $5.99 for it. And it wasn't a good design. So we actually started doing some research. We found a design house that was local to us mm -hmm. and had a couple of meetings with them. And they were the actual ones to de develop our, our initial our, design. Yeah, this, this design. Yep. The important thing will be to really look at the product portfolio or the portfolio mm -hmm. of the person you're looking to hire get an idea of what kind of work they've done in the past. What, are they experienced in candles? Yep. Candles are their own ball game. Yep, they are. And the other thing that Meg, our designer, really works on is it's not just the label in isolation that she's designing. She's designing it for the packaging. So she's designing it for the amber jar versus a clear jar and saying some colors will work in amber, mm -hmm. some won't. So that's where having someone who's in that industry or has had experience in your specific industry really helps because they can look at the product as a whole and not just the label in isolation. Well, the beautiful thing with Meg is she was a designer for anthropology in their candle department. Mm -hmm. So the experience that she has and the knowledge that she brings to our table that we do not have, just with historical sales and knowing you know, a glass jar sells three times better than um, a ceramic jar that the customer cannot see the flame through. Yep. Like she just knows that because she's been in it with yep. anthropology. So finding a designer is really hard. Finding a good one is even more hard. And so finding someone and getting a portfolio of the work they've mm -hmm. done to see if it does fit what you're looking for is a really good sign of if you're on the right track of finding the right person or not. And making sure you have a good, comfortable working relationship with them. I mean, we've been working with Meg for six years now. So we can really, we know how to work with each other. We can bounce ideas off of each other. I bring things to the table, you bring things to the table, and so does she. So it's a really great collaboration of all of us. Yeah. And I think to that point of the good relationship, one of the things I've learned watching this process is your candor has to be very specific and direct because as you go through iterations you need to find you need to finesse every single detail and you can't be wishy-washy on it if you have something you like you have to say that if you have something you don't like even if it's a little script of a letter, mm -hmm. you got to say it. But sometimes it can be so hard to articulate yes. what you like or don't like about right. a design. But that's where a good designer mm -hmm. can take your thoughts and translate it into a design. Yes, because originally when she created the mock for our new logo, I hated it, mm -hmm. but I couldn't really articulate why. No. So I sat with her and we started talking about, well, I didn't really like how the end dipped as low. So it was just little tiny changes that once she made them, I liked it. And it's important too, because you can focus on one little thing of like the font and Fontana, and that makes you lose sight of the entire picture. 
So that's where designers are so helpful in that they can see the entire label at one time where you're digging into specifics of the label. Well, and things like the importance of the color. Mm -hmm. I mean, Meg built a whole complete color map scheme to see how each color plays next to each other. Mm -hmm. So when they're on the shelf, it does look like a cohesive collection. So unless you have a design background, you aren't going to know that. No. So the, the brands and the candle companies that are able to invest and good branding and good design, I really do think have a leg up on the competition. Yeah, it's important. It's an important aspect. When we we do a little bit of consultations and we talked um, to a, a, a candle company that was starting, mm -hmm. and one of her things was, well, what do I do to get more sales? And the first thing I said to her is, I think you need to invest in, in branding. Branding and photography. And photography. Yep. Like, it's, it's so crucial and I understand that having Spending money out before you have sales coming in is so difficult, but I really think it's something that should not be skimped on. Yeah, it's an investment. It's not necessarily an expense. It's, it's an investment in your brand. One of the big things that we went through when we were going through this label design of what's important to us on the label, our big why and our mission is transparency, label, uh, having ingredients on all of our labels. So that was one of the big things that we told Meg was we have to have our story of our transparency on the label, but we want it to be very clean and concise. Mm -hmm. And so that's where we came up with this side panel of here's our ingredients, they're clean, they're laid out, they're nice and bold. And that was one of the big things that we wanted on our label. So finding a designer that can help you integrate your candle's story or your brand's mission or your why into that label that's very easily re uh, readable from the shelf and pops is gonna be really important. That way your label is telling the story you want it to tell. But then also the hierarchy of each element, for example, the scent versus the brand versus mm -hmm. everything else. It's, it's finding the hierarchy. And as you can see in the front panel, we have the scent name, big, big and bold. Yep. So that for our hierarchy, we thought the scent was pretty important for that front panel. If you thought this uh, information was useful or helpful at all, like, comment, subscribe, let us know. We, would, we always love hearing what you guys want us to talk about next. Thanks guys. Thank you.